Hey guys, this is Jim Kane for YCD. You're watching FEB Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. We're back at this test setup. I have the BTEC 6X2 hooked up to our fabulous cell wave dummy load slash inductive RF tap. And we are going to hook up to the spectrum analyzer once again and compare this radio on the spectrum analyzer versus this radio on a tiny SA. So <clears throat> to verify our test settings, we are on VHF call. The radio is set to low power. Keep in mind, this is this um, dummy load slash tap is a minus 40 dB of attenuation. So we're way down anyway. All right, so we're gonna set our center frequency to 146. 0.52 megahertz and we're going to key up just to take a look at it real quick there she is i want to take a look at the btec 6x2 again this guy is currently set to uh low power and he's on vhf call all right and he is going into the cell wave dummy load slash rf tap this is a minus 40 db uh, attenuator it's a inductive RF tap that gives us 40 minus 40 dB of attenuation. So uh, we're set up. I've got the scope, the excuse me, the SA, the spectrum analyzer set up. Um, I have some markers on it. So let's jump and take a look at our parameters real quick. Our start frequency is 100 megahertz over here. Our stop frequency is at 325. We have no frequency offset. All right. So we have our amplitude set with a reference level of minus 25 dBm. The spectrum analyzer is not giving us any attenuation and our division scale is 5 dB per uh, division. And we're on a log scale. If you look down here at the bottom, you can see the amplitude of our two markers. And I'm gonna hit the marker button in a second. There's marker one right there. There's marker two right there. Marker 1 is at 146, and marker 2 is at 293, which is the first harmonic of 146.52. So what I want to see is what this looks like. And then we're going to take a look at our resolution bandwidth, and we are currently set to 10 kilohertz of resolution bandwidth. So super tight, super tight. We can, uh, we can raise that up. This particular essay will go up to 1 megahertz of resolution bandwidth. And we'll probably take a look at that, but right now I'm going to leave it set down here where it is. All right, so I'm keying up. Oh, let me turn on the markers. So marker one, marker two rather, marker two is at 293. And if I cycle through these markers, there's not one on three and four. Marker one is at 146.5. And like I said, it's over here under the word set. And there's marker two at 293. So let's key up would help if I had the radio on. And uh, so you can see our primary peak right there. And he is at minus 40 dBm. And here is our first harmonic frequency, which hasn't really bumped the two at all. And it's at minus uh, 100 to 110. It's kind of bopping around a little bit. Um, you can clearly see, clearly see the numbers there. I can zoom in on that a little bit. So <clears throat> taking a look at that, you can see we're Right, around, we'll call it a hundred average um, for our second harmonic there at two on the far right side, and uh, our primary signal is at minus forty dBm. So, I would say that the uh, the harmonic on this is pretty much non-existent. Now, let's change our resolution bandwidth and see if that changes what we're looking at. So, I'm going to unkey. We're going to go to bandwidth, and let's crank this up to three hundred kilohertz. And you can see we're still showing over 70 dBm of attenuation, or not attenuation, 70 dBm of difference between the two signals, 60 to 70, which is about what we had before. Let's change our bandwidth up to one megahertz. <clears throat> and you can see we've lost number two completely in the noise. Our primary signal is tall and proud, 
at minus 26 dBm. Of course, the top of it has has moved up off the scale. <clears throat> but our number two marker at 293 is minus 100. So that's 75 or so below our primary. So excellent. This radio looks great. And I, I wanted to verify it again. Um, and you're going to see in a second the tiny SA footage where we did the same test and kind of compare the two. Okay. So now that we've looked at the 6X2 on the spectrum analyzer, let's take a look at it on the tiny SA. We're seeing some things that are a little different. At least I've seen that before. So we're going to do this a couple of ways. Same test setup. I have the radio on. And it is on VHF call analog, and it's set to low power. So I'm going to scoot it out of the way. <clears throat> I've got this zoomed in. Hopefully it's not glaring too bad. So we're going to go to, uh, I've already done the calibration on this. We're going to go to measure, and we're going to do harmonic. And we're going to do 146.52 megahertz. So that's the harmonic that we want to test right now. And I am going to key up the radio. And by the way, we're going through the dummy load. It's the cell wave sitting over here on the side. Same piece of test gear that we use with the spectrum analyzer. So when we key up, we see our primary frequency. And he's down at minus 30 because we are going through a dummy load. And he's on low power. And way over on the far side, I'm going to set this down so I can point at it. There is what little tiny harmonic we have somewhere around minus 85. So minus 85, minus 29, get rid of the negative signs, 85 minus 30, that's 55 dB down, and it's a very small harmonic. That's 55 dB down from the primary harmonic or the primary signal rather so pretty much non-existent now that was set with um let's go look at our, our resolution bandwidth that's on auto so let's change our resolution bandwidth to 100 kilohertz and you can see our scanning speed down there on the bottom that little green line and let's key up again It'll have to sweep it a couple times. And you see as it goes, it's getting more data each time. The tiny SA has a limited number of data points. And so based on the range, that tells you, you know, the, the range in megahertz divided by the data points. So we're a little less than one megahertz per data point. But we're, we're going to end up with the same results. This is about minus 30, and this is over minus 80. So same kind of results. So I've got a little bit of a shorter range. We're starting at 100 megahertz, and we're going to 300. So here we go on the smaller range. 100 to 300, and there's almost nothing visible there at all. Now, if we change our measurement, let's see what that looks like. So where this says measure harmonic, we're going to turn that off. Uh, we don't want to get any of those. We'll just turn that off. So now the SA is just sweeping from 100 to 300. And let's key up. And since it's not even looking for a harmonic, there's, there's really nothing even visible. So it's interesting, and I don't know what it means, but it's interesting that when I have this set to check for harmonics, I see something here, tiny, but I see it. When we turn off the harmonic check, as you can see, there's, there's literally nothing on that. So interesting. That's all it is. Guys, that's all for this video. I just wanted to share the different results with you guys. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you watching. I learned to speak one day. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell to get notified whenever I post any new content. Thanks, guys. 73.